Hey guys, today we got a handy little tutorial for you about how to create some glowing objects. This is going to be way, way easier, hands down, way easier than creating fire like normal fire and flames because you don't have to deal with how to create that glow or anything like that. This is not a unique painting whatsoever. It is pretty common if you look up hand fire you're going to see a lot of images of this. In my particular case, I decided to use my own hand, took a picture of my dirty hand and cut it out. And that's what we use for our reference in this one. Anyway, let's get to painting. So as you can see, I have my cutout for my hand in there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in, I'm using Wicked Detail Scarlet Red as my base layer. And as you'll see, that's going to take a while for that to start building any red in there. So we're going to come in, just lay that in really, really blotchy just around the entire inside of the hand portion. And so what we're going to do from there, we're going to go and we're going to look at each one of those lines. Look, let's look at my hand over there on the left hand side. And each one of those spots where there's a glow point, we're going to reinforce that. So we're going to make that a little bit lighter by bringing in more and more of that red. And what's going to happen is that's going to be the glow. That is your outer glow edge. Everything we do from that point on is creating the lighter colors within those. It is important when you're working something like this, remember, what you don't want to do is put a lot of your lighter shade outside of the layer that you worked on. So everything you're going to always work within the previous layer for the most part. And so I'm just going to throw around a little bit of shaky stuff on the outside. I might grab a stencil real quick and just to create a little bit of slightly sharp edges, that's barely going to be noticeable. But once you clear coat, that really kind of will bring that depth out there. If you're going to clear coat, um, you know, this is a demo piece, so I'm really not planning on doing that. So after I get that outer layer done like that, and I've got that inside filled in with the red, I am going to get Createx Illustration Orange, and I'm going to start chasing inside each of those spots that need to glow out. That is not a necessary step. It's something that's completely optional. It's just something I like to put in there and something I like to work with. So I'm going to put each one of those steps inside the glow points, as we keep talking about. And... Everybody has access to red, orange, and yellow. Any transparent orange would work, or you can, you know, use some transparent base, thin down if you have a, a more semi-opaque paint, but most of your airbrush paints are gonna be pretty opaque. We are only gonna use red, orange, yellow, and white in this entire picture. And I did that intentionally because pretty much everybody has access to red, orange, yellow, and white paint if they're airbrushing. As I mentioned, this is a completely optional step and, you know, you don't really have to do it. And people are going to question why I did it because I'm going to come back in with white over the top of that. But it's okay. It only takes a couple minutes to have put that in there. And I'm looking for those points. I'm looking for where is it glowing out and just going to keep adding from there. Then I'm going to get out my white and I'm going to, this is where things start to get interesting. I'm just going to go in and remember we want to work inside the last layer that we put. So I'm staying within the orange and the orange was placed within the red and I'm not going to get outside of that. Maybe just a little bit here and there, but as a rule, mostly you stay within that layer. You do not want to cross over it and we're just going to build up those little cracks. We're being a little bit broad with our coverage right now because we're going to come back in with another layer. And as we get closer and closer to the end of the picture, what will happen is we'll be putting in less paint. We'll just be a little bit more focused with where that paint goes. As you can see, these lines are nothing, you know, that are crazy. We'll do a little bit of blending as you can see there. But these lines are not like tight lines. You could go back and, you know, put your stencil over the top to prevent you from getting paint out on the outside edge. I didn't. I probably should have, but I really didn't care because it would just, you know, make a little bit of fuzz out there and just add a little bit of something extra to the glow anyway. So while you're watching this and give me a moment to talk about some other things is you can go to iStock Photos, Getty Images, several other places and you will see and search Firehand and images on your computer and you're going to find a lot of example of Firehands and that's one of the reasons I chose this painting is because you can get some really really great reference photos. Of course I obviously used my own hand for this particular one but 
those references are out there they're easy to come by everybody can have access to them and you know that way you could kind of follow along the steps with those once i get done putting that white in i came back with my transparent orange or Createx illustration orange and i'm going to cover that up a handy little tip is it will darken as it dries so just keep that in mind let it dry make sure you don't start throwing wet paint over top of wet paint as well because you know you might start getting too much buildup now once we've got that paint dry there when we came back in as you see we're coming back in with the white paint back following the same spot and it looks redundant and yes it is you're going to be doing the same things the difference being is we're going to be a little bit tighter with those lines this time than we were the last time should point out that the createx illustration line is pretty transparent paint and how do you know if you have transparent paint well if you lay it down on black and it starts showing up a lot and it gets it really really builds up quickly you know it's going to get pretty muddy so you want to use a transparent paint barring if you do not have a transparent paint you can use airbrush medium or transparent base depending on which your paint line is calling that but that is basically binder without paint inside it and you can do that now i'm coming in and i'm putting yellow in there because yellow is the brightest of all the colors and i came in a little bit too fast so what i'm going to do is go back with my orange and i'm going to put a little bit more orange in there and i'm not going to quite flood fill it i'm being a little bit judicious where i lay it i just want it to be a little bit more to the orange side and then what i'm going to do is come in and create another layer of white even tighter than the last layer of white that i put in here and that's important to understand if something doesn't look right that doesn't mean you have to say oh man it didn't work out it's if you were building in layers so if something doesn't look good i like to always say if something doesn't look good it doesn't mean you suck it just means you ain't done and that is pretty much you know one of my philosophies if you know you can always come back and continue to work on something when you're working on layers like this there are going to be spots in which it was ugly and it looked ugly when i started this painting as you saw it did not look like i was going to be able to have anything even closely resembling a nice glowy hand so hands down one of the best tips i can give you is to give yourself a little leeway and remember that you have to let things build once i get done putting this white layer in here i want to come back and be a little more judicious and barely touch over the white spots with the yellow and we are now done okay that's gonna be a wrap for today i got a handy little tip for you though before we go is if you happen to have two airbrushes use one for white and one for your colors the reason why is because you don't want that white intermixing with your colors when you start spraying it because it'll create get start to make things a little bit muddy because that white will make your transparent paints a little bit more opaque and just kind of things get a little bit out of whack there if you don't have two airbrushes that's great just make sure you get all of that white out of the cup before you move on to your next color anyway i'm bill kennedy with the airspace and hope you guys got something out of this tutorial that's gonna be a wrap y'all have a good one catch you on the next one